RV217 is an acute infection study. It's also known as the Early Capture Cohort Study, or ECHO. The purpose of the study was to prospectively and intensively follow very high-risk individuals for high risk for HIV infection so that we could capture the very earliest events in acute infection. The unique features of, of our study of RV217 is we followed people twice weekly. Uh, we used finger sticks, much like diabetics who are testing themselves for blood uh, sugars to test for HIV with super sensitive nucleic acid testing platforms that are now available. And in this way, we were able to capture people with HIV infection before they had symptoms, before they had antibody, which is how a diagnosis of HIV is usually made, um, and while their viral loads were actually very low. We are able to define the symptoms and signs, um, and now we are working intensively on evaluating the relationship between the virus and the host immune response. Dade's funded RV217 because we have a tremendous gap in knowledge about the earliest events in acute infection. We really need to understand how the virus comes in and reprograms the immune system and changes the, the normal course of immunity in its favor. Why would it be important to us to capture people with acute HIV infection? It appears from both animal studies and our studies in humans that in just a few days, uh, during acute infection, a tremendous amount of virus is laid down in a latent reservoir. If we want to cure people, uh, this may be our point of opportunity to intervene. Our study shows that the interval of acute infection is about a month, about 30 days. Half the people have had the rise and peak of this acute viremia and its resolution within 31 days. At that point, the viral load set point is established. That's the amount of virus that's in that person's blood for most of the rest of their lives with HIV. And where that set point is dictates how fast they progress. Now, the take home message then from our study is everything that happens that seems to be important for a disease that lasts 10 years occurs in that first month to six weeks. At that point, the long-term outcome of an untreated HIV infection is determined. Here in this cohort, we're really sure that the sample come from the initial time of infection, the first few days of infection. And if we see diversity at that, at that time, we can really confirm that this is the first week of infection and there's really already a lot of diversity in that sample. And that's really interesting because we've been able to, we know that subjects who have a higher diversity early in infection will have higher viral loads, so meaning that they will have faster disease progressions. RV217 was the largest cohort that we have been able to get established uh, looking at the earliest of acute infections. Past studies actually failed to find people who were acute and we ended up with a lot of people who were early infection. When you get out to something referred to as FEBIG3 or 4, which is where there's already an antibody response, uh, the, the die is cast. What we need is the earliest, earliest specimens that RV217 has allowed us to obtain. Because of all the work we've done with the participants, with the community, they understand us, they like us, they trust us because of what we've done, and it is therefore easy for them to make the connection between what we are currently doing and where we need to go. And they volunteer freely, are compliant with their visits, and it's, it's amazing how people come back twice weekly to give blood for several years. There are experts in the field who did not believe we would uh, be able to work with these kinds of high-risk populations who are very vulnerable, move around a lot, um, not really comfortable in formal healthcare settings, uh, and that we'd be able to follow them as frequently as necessary for the study to succeed. And so, in addition to providing the funds, uh, the Division of AIDS leadership took some risk in letting us try to do this study. And it's a credit to them as well as the um, uh, participants and, and the staff at the sites that it succeeded. In a way, we have what you would call community consent. The whole group as a community appreciate it and feel proud 
to be part and parcel of the process of trying to develop an HIV vaccine and get a cure. The really exciting thing about the RV217 study is where we're going with it next. Being able now to show that we can detect hundreds of individuals in the very earliest stages of HIV infection means that now we can come in with novel interventions that will lead us to define approaches to cure HIV infection.